the question on Pakistan, right? Because I know I haven't actually listened to that episode, I think, or I okay. might have. But so you've studied that kind of history of the formation of Pakistan. Yeah. And it's a very touchy subject, as you can imagine. So being from Pakistan, but I want to just put out there that I am quite ignorant about the topic, which is why I'm asking you. I don't want too much to go into it too much. I just don't understand how, as far as I understood, like one of the main things behind creating the nation of Pakistan was like a Muslim nation. And obviously feel free to add and correct once I turn it over to you. And then I just don't get how, as soon as this, the partition happened, more Muslims ended up in India. More Muslims ended up in India than there are in Pakistan from day one. And to me, that's just what's the point then? As in, and then obviously forget all the politics of how it's left with secular liberals in government that are just like messing around for 40 years. But what can you like shed some light on that and perhaps like the reasons behind yeah. it and so actually my research on Pakistan, I actually work with a Pakistani American brother who lives here in the United States. He was a fan like you, and we wound up meeting and talking, and I really linked on him because he's a little bit older than me. So he grew up in Pakistan and came to the United States as an adult to I don't know if he studied here, but he definitely lives and works here now. So I lean, he grew up with the pa in the Pakistani school system and everything. So I mention his name all the time, Zulfi Kostaros. I don't think he'll mind me mentioning his name, but he's the one who really helped me understand pa Pakistan's evolution and its growth and everything. One of the first questions I had for him, actually, when we really started talking about history, because he's a history fan as well, I asked him, why is Pakistan always having so many problems compared to India? And I know, I do know India is not perfect, but India seems to have less problems with Pakistan. And he told me about the, and this is a, uh, an episode I encourage you and you listen to, the three A's of Pakistan. He said Pakistan's development has been guided by the three A's. Allah, which is basically the religion of Islam, the army, and America. That's basically America's obviously the American influence on Pakistani politics and everything. And he really gave me a lot of information about how those three aspects, the religious society of Pakistan, the military society of Pakistan, and the United States influence on Pakistan's development has really changed Pakistan or really forced Pakistan in a certain direction. The military took over Pakistan really almost from its very beginning. And this happens in a lot of Muslim countries. The military is like the strongest, the strongest force. And the civil, the civilian government is really works at the behest of the military government. And I don't, I'm not as involved with Pakistani politics right now. I'm saying involved. I'm not as aware of it as I am as I was when I was preparing for these episodes. Put in perspective, when I did my research on Pakistan, Imran Khan was just became the prime minister. There's a lot of optimism that he would finally the things would change in Pakistan. It was stopping a puppet of the United States. And now we're here just a few months after he was forced out. And I don't want to get you in trouble, so I'm not going to go too far into it. I don't know how much is going to get into it. But I, basically, the, I, even I heard that now that his story was partially done by the Pakistani military. A lot of those bets, I don't know how much influence they had on that. But Pakistan's military has always had a huge influence. Also, the very formation of Pakistan with East... Pakistan, which is now in Bangladesh, in between with the with this a hostile nation, basically India, in between East and West Pakistan, there's almost no way that's going to succeed. So with there's almost no way India would have found regardless of talk about Hindus, Muslims, any kind of religious thing, just from a purely polit political government perspective, if I know that I have two, I have a nation that's split in half and they're potentially my rivals and my enemies. I'm going to try to weaken them. And India did that by taking Bangladesh, was down Bangladesh away from, or separating Bangladesh from the total Pakistani government or total Pakistani entity. It's, Pakistan also has a problem with its terrain. It basically just doesn't have the, the it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a much smaller country than India. So it doesn't have as much natural resources as India has. And as I mentioned, wealth does help a lot. And Pakistan spends so much of its wealth on defense, on military spending, that it doesn't really have as much to really develop its country the way that India has. So there's lots of reasons, but I will say the beginning of the problem was just a very structure with the East and West Pakistan and all of India in between them. That was a recipe for the nation being split apart. And from there, Everything. And there's also mistakes by the government. Zulfikar, I can't remember his Ali name. Bhutto. Uh, but yeah, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto made a lot of mistakes. He had he had some lofty goals, but he was part of the problem with, with the division of the two nations of East and West Pakistan. 
and then his successor, Ziaul Haq, getting Pakistan involved with America, with the CIA and the Afghan war. There's so much in that. <laughs> that was just, oh boy. That was just, yeah. that has led to, we're, that has just led to all the problems in the Swat Valley and the, and the Pakistan Taliban and all the things with, with the war on terrorism. There's so much involved in that. Like I said, these things, everything has a history. So you know, people look at Pakistan, they think that Pakistan is just a failed society. It's not. It's, you go back to Ziaul Haq and his involvement with the CIA has set Pakistan up to really suffer. And they, I don't know, I don't know how things are in Swat Valley now with all the problems that they had back maybe about 10 years ago. I don't know if those things are still going on now. But Pakistan lost over 60,000 people throughout the war on terrorism. That's a huge amount for a nation that's supposed to be the United States ally. Lost a lot of people in that. So Pakistan suffered a lot due to its alliance with the United States. And there's just so much more to it that it's hard to get into. With, and in a short period of time, I don't I want to keep mm. it aside. But it's just, it's just so much. Those three, listen yeah. to that episode, the three A's yeah. of Pakistan. Jazakallah, definitely. But just the starting point about how when they had this vision for Pakistan, did they expect all Muslims to be on that side? Or I don't know right. if it's, that's the bit that I struggle with. Okay, Pakistan formed next day, or well, obviously I'm simplifying it. After mm -hmm. the whole migration's done, there's more Muslims on that side. Is it okay then? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It would have been impossible, I think, for every Muslim. Pakistan is like the second largest Muslim country right now after Indonesia. It's one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. I don't know, and it, it doesn't have the natural resources that India has, because half of the Pakistan is pretty much desert, with the Lochistan province, and much of that is really just desert and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really have the natural, I don't know if it would have the natural resources to support if all, I don't know, two or 300 million Muslims have moved from India back mm -hmm. in 1947 to Pakistan, and Bangladesh, we're talking about East Pakistan, which is mo mostly Bangladesh now, that's something totally mm -hmm. different. I don't know if it could have even managed all that without having more of, even if it had Kashmir and that may have helped, but that would not have been enough to completely support all of those people. And generally speaking, it's very hard. India is a huge country. India is gigantic. Much, a, a large portion of Muslim community, Muslim, Indian Muslims live in the Deccan area. It was called the Deccan Plateau in South Central, in like South, Southern India. It would have been very difficult for all those people to move. Hmm. All of a sudden, all the way across, and with all the hmm. violence going on with the with the uh, partition at the time, hmm. it just would have been unlikely for everyone to have left. And also, India would not have wanted all the Muslims to leave either. It's in their natural, it's in their best interest to to promise at least protection and security to the Muslims or whatever they could do to make them stay, to to convince them to stay. And everyone didn't agree with Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Every Muslim did not agree with him. He had to convince a lot of Muslims to go along with him. And every Muslim in India at the time did not agree with his vision. And so many of them didn't want to go. And so it's just, it's just natural that millions of Muslims would prefer to stay where they already were in India. Mm. Oh, just couldn't come if it, and eventually just decide to just, was just accept with what we have right now. I know a lot of Pakistani friends of mine who now will be their parents and grandparents who came or not even the parents, really grandparents and great grandparents now who came over from during the partition and all. It was just, it's just impossible for everyone to move. Yeah. And I don't know if Pakistan could have really supported all those people anyway.